We're fans of electric vehicle here on the channel. And by now, everyone should know that electric vehicles are much simpler to operate. They have far few moving parts. No cooling water, pumps, belts, fans, mufflers, exhausts, or indeed catalytic converters. They are also eerily quiet and have no emissions at the point of use. Indeed, none if charged from zero carbon renewable sources. Some experts believe that, at least for light duty vehicles in sunny parts of the world, solar energy collected from the exposed surfaces of the vehicles themselves could be sufficient to provide propulsion for limited mobility, say 20 to 30 miles. This means that proverbial little old lady who uses her car to drive to church every Sunday may never need to fill up or recharge her electric vehicle, so long as the car is parked outdoors. As reported in NG Post in late October 2017, the notion of solar cars is not as far-fetched as it might have once seemed. David Hone, Shell's climate change advisor, believes that solar augmentation, for example in the form of solar roofs, may become widespread by 2030. As we talked about in an earlier video, and the link appearing now on screen, Tesla's home storage and the recent moves by IKEA to enter the domestic storage space clearly indicates there's an appetite for consumers to take ownership of their power generation. What would it take for consumers though to link their electric vehicles into their own solar generators? Experimental solar cars taking part in the latest solar race in Australia operate on roughly one kilowatt of juice. That of course is not enough to power a heavy SUV with air conditioning and golf clubs in the boot, but the range of solar augmented EVs is likely to improve over time. This year's race included a category for four-seater family cars, travelling the 3,000 km distance with a mere 64 kilowatts of external energy. Putting this into context, and as Energy Post notes, a Tesla Model S has a 100 kilowatt hour battery and a range of around 500 km. Modified Teslas, however, have managed to extend this range to over 1,000 km, or roughly 620 miles. The Australian solar race, amongst the longest and most gruelling of its kind, started as a contest to see how university students can put their engineering skills to practical use. But over the years, this and other solar races have attracted major sponsors, including the makers of solar panels, cars and car components. A growing number of experts, including Shell's home, are convinced that super efficient solar augmented EVs may be the future of light duty, short distance transportation. However, as Tom Lombardo writing in engineering.com is keen to point out, the physics don't currently add up. As he describes, the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface is around 100 watts per square metre. Given the surface area of a car, and being a generous 100% efficiency, the electric vehicle covered in solar panels could absorb around 4 to 5,000 watts of solar power. Furthermore, since one horsepower is just shy of 750 watts, this equates to a gain of just 6.4 horsepower, less than a garden mower. All this explains why the solar roof Toyota offers on its new Prius hybrid model only extends the car's range by 5 kilometres or 3 miles. Whilst this might not sound much, given advances in technology, solar augmentation could be sufficient in the future to meet the needs of ultralight and super efficient cars offering a range of 50 kilometres or 30 miles per day. Certainly more than enough for our little old lady to get to church every Sunday. Such cars can become part of a wider generation network during the summer months, assuming they are parked outdoors in sunny parts of the world, but may have to juice up from time to time during the winter months, cloudy periods, or when extended range or heavy lifting is required. Of course, the numbers are also affected by location, the vehicle's weight, and accessories such as air conditioning. Should large fleets of such cars emerge by 2030 or 2050, they can operate on no gas and no net electricity on an annual basis. Their excess generation during the summer months would offset the shortfall in the winter. Our next cars will not be entirely solar powered, I think that's clear. Indeed, we've long argued that plug-in hybrids are most likely to be the next step. The pioneering work being carried out in the Australian outback and by engineers around the world is starting to prove that although a solar power vehicle isn't yet feasible, a practical solar assisted electric vehicle is clearly just around the corner.